Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, we are going to take a close look at the Kinhank GP430. This is a CM30 based handheld and I'm very curious what are we going to get. So this thing comes in different colors. As you can see over here, we also have a transparent version. But what I was very curious about this handheld, how is the quality? Because we have seen so many handhelds and some of them are, let's say, very expensive and feel very cheap. I did I must say quite some different handhelds when it comes to CM3 based version or normal Pi. But most of them are, yeah, let's say, looking very cheap, uh, very strange builds. But this thing looks very nice. And there is another thing. Oh, it smells very nice. Oh, I love it. So, but when you're looking at the controls and everything, it's quite interesting. But we're going to take a close look at it later. First, let's see what's inside the box. But there was something else that I found very interesting. There's no Chinese toilet paper manual today. No, 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 not at all. As you can see, it comes in a very nice, good, high quality paper, color printed. Yeah, you can say a manual where you can see what you need to do if you want to add new games or you want to reconfigure everything. It's very nice. And they, they, yeah, they're just going to deserve some extra kudos for that. We're going to get this conversion cable because we have a TV out option with HDMI, but we need a conversion and also going to include the cable, USB cable for charging, data transfer, and here we have an, an yeah, you can say an adapter from the Type C up to the normal USB because we can use a controller, and that's something that I think is pretty cool. You can use it like a handheld, but you can also connect it to your television, and you have this thing like a game system. So that's pretty awesome. So let's take a close look at the handheld. All right, so let's remove the plastic for protecting the display. But the first thing I did notice with this is that it feels quite nice. It feels quite heavy. We're having two analog sticks here. I'm not a big fan of it. I already, I already said it in the message from the future. I really prefer to they're going to put the D-pad over here. I don't know why they're doing this because there are a lot of games are not going to use the two analog sticks. So here we're having the A, B, X, Y. We're having two buttons over here. Let's say select to start. At the top we're having four buttons so we can play all games if needed like PlayStation 1. So I'm very curious how this is going to play. But I can reach the buttons very easily. As you can already hear on the video that they are very clickish. So at the top we're having two Type-C connections. HDMI out and the on and off switch. At the back you're having some information about the product itself. Here you can see we're having the fan. And when turning it on you will notice that it will turn on instantly. With the system itself but at the end you don't feel it and doesn't really yeah, i can say it doesn't even notice that it is there but it is needed because the cm3s are going to get really hot and i think you need to charge it damn it so at the bottom of the handheld we're finding the two speakers and i'm very curious how these are going to sound so these tiny speakers inside are not giving us some bass Mid is good, but it's a little bit too high sometimes. Then we're having the volume control at the right, we're having the CF card and the audio out. But let's talk about the controls of the system because this is very important. So what I did notice with the two joystick, my fellow YouTuber RetroDodo already mentioned that we're going to get more like the cheap joysticks. There's no click, so there's no extra button beneath it. And what I also mean, he's totally right that they are feeling very flimsy. The travel itself is very short. But what is also very important is the D-pad itself. It's a strange position, but I can tell you it doesn't play that bad. It feels quite, yeah, let's say, flimsy and very cheap. But when I was playing with it, I did notice that all my move comes out instantly when playing a fighting game. So that is really funny. So on the other hand, it feels very cheap. It feels, I wouldn't say horrible, but when playing... It works as a charm. Okay, so I want to let you hear the fan itself. Maybe you cannot hear it even on this video. But it has a still very, let's say, tiny vibration when it comes holding the system. So you can feel that there is a fan spinning inside the device itself, but it is not really annoying. So the system itself is based on a CM3 Raspberry Pi that is running on RetroPie. Booting up will take some time, I think it's around one minute or so, so that is very long compared to all the competition. Yeah, it's a pie and it just needs the time to boot up. But what I do like about this handheld, it comes with this very beautiful IPS display that is colorful and will give you a very nice gaming experience. 
Okay, so I wanted to do a quick teardown for you guys. And yeah, you need to remove the four screws, but they click the two shells together. The plastic quality is very good in my opinion. So as you can see here, we're having the gigantic battery that is over here. Then we're having the cooling element of the Pi, and the Pi is a completely perfect fit over here in this shell part. So if you're looking at the construction, I need to give them some extra kudos. It's just beautiful how they made this. Another thing is, that we, as you can see, this is one complete full PCB that is custom made where you just basically click in the Pi. So what I do like, and I hope in the future if they're producing this handheld more, that we can just upgrade it. So we're going to get new firmware in combination with the new Pi and they combine it with a simple and, and higher clocked version or a Raspberry Pi 4 if it comes out in the future. So we can upgrade this version. And that's something that is unique and that is not common with most handhelds. Normally what you see is what you're going to get. As you can see the two speakers over here, this one are connected in the slots there. So and overall it's a very beautiful device even from the outside but also from the inside. When it's powered on, this is the menu which you're going to get. It's a custom menu with the Kinhank logo here at the left top. And as you can see with the Raspberry Pi, we're having quite some different systems up from the 8-bit stuff up to the PSP. But I already can tell you that second Dreamcast and PSP will not run perfectly on this device because the CM3 is not powerful enough to run it in full 60 FPS. So that's something you need to take in consideration. And at the moment, I think there is not an option or a cheap option that can play these games. And you can see when you're running MAME, it runs very well. And with 16-bit, we don't have an issue at all. It's just running perfectly. Of course, for me, it's more like a Captain Obvious moment because 16-bit is just very easy to emulate nowadays. And with a very, let's say, a powerful pie like the CM3, is not a problem. I still have the feeling that I can't move with the character. Or Oh, I can. He is running so freaking slow. One of my favorite Final Fight games. I love this playing it more regional Mega Drive. It's so cool. The soundtracks are epic. And the speakers in this device are just very nice. This is what we call not playable. It's a shame. But when you're looking at the GP430, it's a beautiful device. But I think if you want to get yourself a handheld, there are so many options out there nowadays. You need to pay around $150 or $160 for the device. 
yeah and with the cm3 inside maybe in the future you can upgrade it and you have the possibility to play let's say the psp gaze and sega dreamcast but sadly so out of the box you can play everything that is basically 8 bit 16 bit main up to playstation 1 but there are so many options out there nowadays and already said it in my message from the future video and i think that is a very big bummer in I really love this handheld for what it is and if you're looking at the display the audio the build quality it's just a great product but but even with this 5000 milliamp battery that is quite huge for the handhelds for this size it's still a little bit of a bummer because if they will give this thing some more power and it can beat the, the competition with PSP and Dreamcast then it's worth 150 160 dollars but yeah this is what you're going to get let me know what do you think of this I want to thank you for watching consider subscribing hit the little bell and We'll see you in the next video.